They're very good with adults. Sometimes we call them little professors, which you were referring to. So they're very bright, they're very articulate. Actually, in our office in Irvine, which is right down the road, I have a number of students whose <coughs> parents are professors over here at UCI. One of them, both parents are professors at UCI. Um, but they also have a hard time sharing kind of their emotions, expressing emotions, receiving emotions. And they have this difficulty with what we call being reciprocity. So if someone's talking to them and someone says, wow, it, it, it's kind of cold outside today. And they said, oh yeah, but do you like dinosaurs? This is my favorite dinosaur. They just kind of can't keep that two-way conversation going and they talk about what's more of interest to them. But it can be very hard to pick up for two reasons. The first reason is there's usually no delay in their language. So they're very articulate. Like around here in Irvine, a lot of the kids with Asperger's, because the Irvine School District is so good, can be achieving very well. They could even be in gate classes uh, because their language is good and their cognition is good. Many of them are very bright and gifted, but if you ask them about friends and social activities, that will be the big difference. They won't have a lot of friends. They won't be involved in social activities. So they'll, they'll be in the internet all the time if they're older. And as they get older, what we're finding is they start to get uncomfortable with that and depressed because they realize the difference more. Now we know that ADD and autistic spectrum disorders are biological and genetic. We didn't know this 20 years ago. ADD is the more common. It affects about 10% of children, we believe, although only about 5% are diagnosed. Autism is about 1 out of 150 kids, but with boys, it's about 1 out of 100. Do you think we see more boys or girls with these disorders? Boys. With ADD, that's the case, but guess what happens for ADD, for example, when we get to adults? Does anyone know the incidence with adults, male to female with ADD? It's about even. So what does that tell you happens to the girls? We miss the girls. The average age we see a boy with ADHD or ADD is in elementary school, usually kindergarten through third grade. The average age we see a girl is usually in high school, middle school, high school, or as a mom bringing her kids in. So it's missed a lot with girls. That's why we see the incidence with adults about the same. We know these are genetic disorders. They found some of the genes for ADD and recently they uh, found some of the genes for autism. It's not so clear that they have like a genetic test yet and a lot of things are kind of associated with ADD like impulsivity and addictions and other things. So, uh, but we know it's genetic and we also know it's related to neurotransmitters in the brain. I'll get back to that later. Now, when we talk about looking at the brain and doing brain imaging, believe it or not, this isn't something new, even though some of you might be hearing about it today for the first time. This goes back almost 20 years ago. In 1990, Alan Zemetkin at the National Institutes of Health, which is the big government agency in Washington, D.C. that does a lot of research, did a study with adults with ADD, and he looked at their brains. And he found there was a significant difference between adults with ADD and those that didn't. What he found overall, just we lumped them all together, there was a group with adults that had ADD and a group that didn't. This is a PET scan. A PET scan is like a picture of your brain when you're doing an activity and it sees how active your brain is. You have a radioactive IV that goes into your system and it looks at different um, kind of parts of your brain to see how active it is and how active you metabolize sugar, uh, glucose. And the bright colors, the whites and the reds, show that your brain is active. The dark colors, the blue and the green, so that your brain is less active. So almost 20 years ago, they could see the difference between adults with ADD, their brains were overall underactivated, and adults that didn't have ADD, their brains were more active. Now this was before we knew there was all these different types of ADD, but so this isn't really new, but these were used in research centers and universities, and they're very expensive, and you have this radioactive IV, um, they never really approved doing this type of research with children, with the research subject committees, but this was kind of the start. Then about 15 years ago, another type of brain in imaging came out called SPEC scans, which is a blood flow study, and they found that there was a different pattern with a lot of people with ADD. Instead of their brains being under aroused, their brains were over aroused. Their brains were too active. This is the front part of the brain where this white area is, like where I'm looking towards the door now. 
and the red means this part of the brain is overactive, where the blue is average. You see all this red in the front? The front or anterior is called, and the cingulate gyrus, this is the area of the brain that's responsible for your brain being aroused and kind of overactive and getting stuck on things. What they found is that a certain percentage of children, adolescents, and adults with ADD, instead of their brains being underactive, they were overactive. And it ended up that with kids, it was about 25%. When we got up to adults, it was almost more than a third, almost 40%. So what's the importance of that? If your brain is over aroused and you take Ritalin or Adderall Concerta, a stimulant, it's going to make your brain more aroused and you're going to get side effects and you're not going to feel good and you're not going to be able to sleep. Noah, the boy that we saw in the doctor's show, had this pattern. And I'll show you in the brain map, that's that red area that's in the far right called overactive beta, he had this pattern. So the fact that we could start to see these patterns, we could help people say, well, you know, if you have this pattern, you need to be really careful if you do a stimulating tr medication like a stimulant or even an antidepressant. And we could see that they had kind of an opposite pattern, important to know. But the, you know, even the diagnosis of ADD, like we were talking about on the doctor show, isn't simple. You can have about 10 things on the surface that looks like ADD. You were saying something about people's personality, their character, so it could be motivation. Something could be going at home in the family. A couple could be getting divor divorced and the kid could be inattentive in school. What would happen if we had an adolescent who was depressed in middle school? Would they pay attention in the class? Would they turn their homework in? They could look like they had ADD, right? We could have a student that was anxious do any of you ever get anxious if you have to do public speaking? Mm -hmm. And if I had to switch with you, would you maybe start fidgeting? That can look like hyperactivity or more likely kids, students can have test anxiety. You get really nervous before a test and you forget everything. That can look like you're not paying attention. You could have a learning disability, you could have uh, Asperger's or autism, or you could have every single one of these at the same time. That's why we have to do the test. On the surface, we're looking at symptoms. The questionnaires we use and the teachers sometimes fill out for students or adults fill out that we have on the table over here, these are looking at symptoms. But we want to look at the brain to see what's going on in the brain. One of my uh, colleagues who's a psychiatrist years ago when I was starting to do this brain imaging test, he said, I'm so glad you're doing this because I always get embarrassed when I go to these medical conventions when there's other physicians around. And I said, well, why is that? I was in med I kind of was pre-med and wanted to be a physician initially before I found out about this and kind of biological psychology. And he says, you know, we get really harassed because psychiatrists are the only group of physicians that treat an organ of the brain without testing it and looking at it first. He, you know, he gave me a good analogy. Let's say you're walking up all these steps here at the church and your heart starts going fast and you get heart pains and you get rushed to the hospital and they say, okay, I think you need bypass surgery. Here are the papers, sign up. Would any of you do that? Of course not. What would you say? Aren't you going to do some sort of test? Of course, they're going to do an EKG and now they have scans. But in psychiatry, they haven't had a test to look at the brain so they had to look at the symptoms to try to figure out what was going on. But as these new brain imaging techniques have evolved, now we can look at the brain. So this is really important. At our centers, attention learning centers that we have in Irvine, San Juan Capistrano, and Encinitas, we do not treat anyone with neurofeedback or even medication until we know what's going on in their brain. And the boy on the doctor show was misdiagnosed twice before we saw what was going on in his brain. This is a common referral from a principal. I usually get these at the beginning of the year, but sometimes they get these any time. This is a boy who's been in the principal's office every other week the whole year. The principal keeps telling him, he says, listen, Johnny, think about what you do before you do it. Can you read what Johnny says? By the time I think about it, I've already done it. Johnny's impulsive, so what do we do? I tell the principal, let's get him tested because if he really has ADHD or Asperger's, it's not all his fault. He may not be able to control what his brain can't do. If he doesn't, then we probably have to have a behavior contract or we have to be pretty strict with home and we have to work on parenting techniques. We often have to do both. That's why we do the test.